What's going on guys, this is Kazi. This video is gonna be just a tiny bit different than what you're used to. Those videos are not stopping, I'm gonna be popping those out, but this time I'm talking about a very, very hot subject, which is how important is it to have a professional grade monitor when it comes to color grading? And I wanna touch base on so many different things, so we're gonna kinda go places, but before we jump into that, Guys, make sure to hit a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm dropping value bombs there every single day. And for those who are interested in taking their color grading game to the next level, I have a one hour long training that takes you from not knowing anything about Resolve all the way to grading your first professional gig. Link is in the description. And on that note, let's roll the intro. When it comes to monitors, you have to go through this checklist. Let's start going through it. You gotta ask yourself, who's your clientele? Who are you working for? Now, if you're in that category where you're working on top tier stuff, let's just say Super Bowl commercials, Prime TV, or feature films, then most probably you're hooked up, meaning you're working on site and you're working from a huge bay where they bring in producers and they wine and dine them while you do your magic. So good for you you don't have to worry about anything. Even if you're lucky enough to be working from home on those big gigs, then there's a certain set of rules that you have to follow. Even Netflix will give you, you know, here's a list of monitors that you have to pick from when you're working on their stuff. So there's no way around it. Let's talk to everybody else then outside of that bubble. And let's say if you're working on tons of branded content and you're just a media company that just creates tons of content for clients, all sorts of clients. I mean, it could be corporate videos, wedding videos, whatever have you, right? Promo videos. Then I can tell you right now that living in the SDR world as of today in 2020, and when I say SDR world, I'm talking about Rec 709 and sRGB, which pretty much most of the monitors are pretty good and pretty accurate with those. Then when you talk about the nits, um, peak brightness of your monitor, that's also a very important one that you have to keep in mind. Unless you're working on HDR, you have to go on 1000 nits and more, but anything less than that is more than enough when you're working on SDR stuff. Once again, as of 2020, it's okay to work with SDR. And don't think about future-proofing yourself because HDR monitors right now, the true HDR monitors, are so expensive that you don't wanna to try to play the, you know, let me future-proof myself game because you might end up spending a lot of money. And it's the same thing when 4K monitors were new, they were really expensive and now they're commodity, they're so cheap. So this HDR trend is gonna be, you know, follow the same exact path as 4K. So just hang tight and I would say spend your money on a really good SDR monitor that's color accurate, and that's gonna be the best bang for your buck right now. Contrast ratio is probably the biggest one for me. If you guys remember, I used to have a Flanders Scientific, which is a broadcast monitor. It's a 24 inch monitor that's 1080p and SDR, and it's $5,000. And I had that monitor, when it comes to color accuracy, second to none, best thing I've ever used. But when it comes to contrast, it just bugged the F out of me. Compared to my OLED, not even close. So I had to give up on my Flanders. I had this one calibrated while I had Flanders so close to my Flanders, as close as it can get. And some of you are probably thinking, hey, what about ABL, which is auto brightness limiter? Like, how do you tackle that? The thing is that there's a way to turn that off uh, from a service remote. And then once you have that turned off, all of a sudden this monitor turns into a freaking beast mode. The biggest Achilles heel of all OLEDs up until that point is their ABL, which is just turned on. It's impossible to turn it off unless you go with the Panasonic high-end series, which is the FC1000U and GZ and all those um, upper echelon uh, monitors or TVs that can run you about $5,000 and more. But if you wanna stick with like the LG OLEDs that are pretty affordable, you have to go through this advanced mode feature and turn the ABL off, which will void your warranty, but it's worth every single cent. One of the most important elements to proper monitoring is having a calibrator. I'm using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro and it comes with its own proprietary software. You just have to make sure that you're in the right environment, meaning you have your bias lighting. Once that's said and done, you can start the process. Depending on which setting you choose, it takes about three to 10 minutes to calibrate your monitor. 
It will adjust your colors and your contrast and really get the most out of your monitor. One of the things you absolutely wanna avoid is any kind of reflection. You're using an OLED display that's glossy, then it's gonna reflect off of your screen. So bias lighting is the answer here. You can go on Amazon and pick up these bad boys, throw it behind your screen, and that's about it. This solution alone can make a huge difference in your color grading experience. Now I wanna take a second and share something with you guys. We have a Facebook group for all my masterclass members and we do a weekly competition. And Brian, last week, completely flunked this competition. I'm talking about like, look at his scores last week. And then after a little bit of coaching, next week he came up with this. Now let's just go through his look frame by frame and then I'm gonna play it through and we're gonna watch the video. Nobody can tell me that this looks bad. His inspiration was bad boys for life and I think he absolutely knocked it out of the park. This look is absolutely gorgeous to the point where I went ahead and I asked him, I'm like, Brian, I need to know which monitor did you use for this? Because all these little nuances that you're doing, you're taking this a tiny bit of like a magenta off the whites and you're doing all these little things that nobody will ever pay attention to unless they have a really solid monitor where it's color accurate and you can make those changes. And I asked him and then here's his reply. Check this out. So he's using a $400 monitor. He threw a color monkey on it, which is a consumer calibrator to get the colors in the ballpark. But guys, it's a $400 monitor. One pro tip that I wanna give you though is this. Having multiple screens in your room is probably the best investment. And I'm talking about different manufacturers. I'm not talking about same monitor, you know, calibrated the same way. I'm talking about different manufacturers. My main screen is LG OLED. The monitor to the left is a consumer level $200 LG monitor, which is not even calibrated. To my right is a BenQ SW321C, which is their flagship monitor and which is calibrated, but it's a LCD monitor. So now I'm looking at three different screens that are completely on a different caliber. So I got my LG OLED that's professionally calibrated and that's my main monitor. Then I got LCD so I can see how my contrast and my colors are gonna look on a really nice calibrated LCD monitor. Then I can look to my left and I can see how my stuff is gonna look on a $200 regular monitor that's not calibrated. And then let me show you a million dollar tip right here. Now this tip is not coming from me. This tip is coming from all the big production houses. That's what they're using. And this is how they're doing their final QC. And that's a real freaking thing because ultimately majority of the stuff is being watched on mobile devices. I'm even talking about Netflix, Amazon Prime, all of that. So this right here, is pivotal and the newest OS update. Now watch this. I can throw a feed directly onto my iPad and then I can send a clean out from my resolve onto my iPad. And that's one more set of eyes that I can just double, triple, quadruple check that, hey, this is how people are gonna see my stuff. So start looking at these things from a consumer perspective. Like if we can just cover what it would look like on my grandma's $200 monitor to my brother's $2,000 really nice calibrated monitor to somebody's OLED in the living room to somebody's iPad. If I can cover all of that, then what else is there for me to like worry about? So the moral of the story is not a million dollar monitor can make you a colorist. You have to practice the actual art element of color grading. Advice is free, so there's plenty of that going around. You have to be careful who you listen to and where you get your advice from because you go on these color grading forums and all they talk about is technical information. You go to the FB groups, same exact thing is happening. Nobody mentions this one thing and that is the art behind color grading. At the end of the day, we're enhancing the story. That's what it's about. I mean, have you ever listened to an interview with an award-winning editor? He's always gonna be thanking his assistant editors because he says that all the work that they put in, nobody sees. 
and it, there's so much technical information, 99% of the times, the assistant editor technically is way more savvy than the editor. But who tells the award-winning story? Who takes home the freaking Oscar? It's the editor. So as a colorist, it's exactly the same thing. There's like these two things. Do you wanna be a technician or do you wanna be a colorist? I think you know the answers. I highly encourage you to stop spending so much time on the technical mumbo jumbo of color grading and spend that time learning the actual inner workings of primaries and how secondaries work and how to use qualifiers correctly how do all these nodes work with each other? How can you create a grade that evokes a certain emotion? I mean, these things and what we've seen, what Brian did, it was just so powerful. And I hope everybody saw it, how it struck me and kind of take a page out of Brian's book and start spending all their energy on the actual skill of color correcting and color grading and then all the technical stuff. And on that note, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, share this with friends, drop a comment below, let me know what kind of content do you wanna see on this channel. Make sure to check out the training in the description below, one hour long training that's gonna take you from not knowing anything about Resolve all the way to grading your first professional gig. I will see you guys in the next video.